Hey guys, for this pigment episode, I wanted to briefly go over five pigments that I tried to make, but either failed or gave up. I actually don't feel that great making a video about this because it hits right in my self-esteem, but here it goes. So let's just start with the poor concept and gross ones first. This idea was from around a year ago. Not sure what I was thinking at the time, but it seemed like it could be fun and I was pretty sure that the ketchup contained added colorants. I started by mixing it with water and filtering it in an attempt to get any organic matter that could rot inside it out. I thought that maybe ketchup was full of artificial red color because what isn't full of artificial color these days, but as you can see here, that water is a pale and thin murky orange. I guess ketchup is way more unadulterated than I thought, which is a good thing, I suppose. Not wanting to give up so quickly, even though the whole room reeked of sugar and vinegar, I added some alum and washing soda to the ketchup water. it immediately turns into a really awful diseased color. It then started creating a large and thick foam with a greenish water sitting under it. After a few hours, the foam shrank and left behind I don't know how to explain this, but just bits of gunk. Lots of thick bits that look and smell pretty nasty, honestly. Kind of like a pink curdled milk in swamp water. I hated it, so tossed it out and pretended it never happened. On to the next one. This was also a really stupid idea from a year ago. I think I'd chosen to try it as gimmick or novelty, because let's be real, it would have made pretty decent clickbait. To start, I broke a cigarette open into a jar of water and let it sit for a few hours. I then strained it out and was left with a bright brown that looks a bit like tea, but it should never be tea because it would kill you, especially this factory made stuff with additives in it. I don't think natural tobacco would be any healthier though because I think it's the drinking nicotine part that's the really dangerous thing about this dye. Anyways, I add some alum and then some washing soda and it turns into a nasty green. At the time, I didn't know that alum pigments have a tough time with reds and oranges. Had I known that then, maybe I would have tried to make a chalk pigment or an iron oxide one. I'm actually not ashamed that I tried this because it was a great idea and I finally used a scientific method, but it was just very poorly executed. I mean, I kind of made verdigris, but I also didn't. Let me just show you, but first a little background. I love backgrounds, so if you want to skip through this, just jump to this time. The pigment that Wikipedia calls fickle and finicky is actually one of the pigments that excite me the most. Until the 19th century, which is very recent, it was the most vibrant green you could get anywhere. It's made by applying acetic acid, vinegar basically, to copper plates, and the resulting corrosion is scraped off. The way it's usually done is by hanging or placing the piece of copper in a sealed vessel with some vinegar or wine. The fumes from the liquid are the ones that do the job. It can also form naturally as a patina on weathered and exposed copper, brass, and bronze. That stuff though is usually copper carbonate, like the one I used in a previous video, but when acetic acid is present, it becomes copper acetate, which is a chemically and structurally separate material to copper carbonate. In 18th century France, people used to have verdigris farms in their cellars, except they used distilled wine instead of vinegar. 
One last cool thing about it, because I could go on forever if I didn't edit this down, the pigment is only light fast in oil, as an oil paint. It turns brown in any other media, almost like it was meant to be. It also starts out bluish green, but greens over time and then become stable. I had a lot of copper wires that I wanted to recycle, so I thought I could use them to make the verdigris. I know that having a flat surface is the best way, but I'm super into upcycling right now and thought maybe I could just brush the verdigris off. Like I said, for this one, I pulled out all the stops and actually tried to apply some semblance of real scientific methods. So I got the scale. I realize that it's underwhelming, but baby steps. I wanted to make the verdigris the tried and tested way by hanging it over the top of a jar, but I wanted to control or test for three things. I had read online that adding ammonia to the vinegar would make the verdigris extra blue. I also wanted to test whether submerging the copper is better than hanging it or if it creates different results. Since I also want to be able to tell what method yielded the most pigment, I measured the weight of copper and controlled the amount of vinegar. I had made a cool wire ball thing, but first I wanted to test it all this out on smaller pieces, so I cut some wire and hung it from saran wrap. This will prove to be a mistake. For the ammonia test, I used some window cleaner. Please don't give me trouble for that. After I prepared all the tests and sealed them, I left them on a shelf for 7 weeks. This is what it looked like after those 7 weeks. The wires were literally dripping with vinegar. I really thought it wouldn't get that wet. It's almost like it's submerged and the whole gas fume thing was kind of pointless. Here I am, naively preparing to measure the yields down, as if there's even enough to measure. Remember how in the beginning I said I kinda made it though? I mean look at this. This is verdigris and it's so damn beautiful, it's just on the worst surface for harvesting ever. It's only in a really thin layer around the wire, so when I tried to scrape it off nothing really came off of it. What I collected after 10 to 15 minutes looked really pretty, but it was just too small of an amount and too labor intensive. I did at least find out that there wasn't much of a difference between the ammonia and control tests. I reckon a much larger amount of ammonia would need to be used, but that would kind of ruin the fun. The wire that was submerged colored the vinegar that it was in and it became a bit more dull, but otherwise it was very much intact looking. It makes me think that maybe the surface should be scratched up a bit beforehand. Having a proper verdigree farm is legit one of my life goals, so I'll definitely try to revisit this again with proper copper plates. 
This next pigment is also made from metal and it's the one I'm most ashamed of honestly because it's so easy that millions if not billions of people make it unintentionally every day. Filling at ketchup was fine because it was just me being a pioneer but who can't make rust? Apparently it's actually kind of finicky. When I came up with the idea of making an iron oxide pigment, I started with the first logical step, googling how to tell what is made of iron. Turns out a magnet can at least narrow it down to iron, nickel, or cobalt, which it should be pretty easy to tell the difference between them. I wave my magnet around in the shed till I find an old chain that had already started rusting. Perfect, because at least I'm sure it's rustable. I should have just scraped off the rust then and there, but instead I submerged it in water. I mean, rust is caused by oxygen and water, right? I left it there for two or three weeks and then checked in on it. There was a little bit of rust at the top, but not the bottom, and a pretty gross film on the water that I suspect to be bacteria. I know that black rust is a thing, so maybe not all was lost and I would have just had to retitle the video. It was pretty much completely black and none of the surface came off when I scraped it. It seemed really baked in. I thought maybe if I filter the water it was in I'd be able to get a few particles, but there was honestly not much there at all. In fact, one day I accidentally threw it out because it just looked like a dirty filter that was just lying around. Super underwhelming and I've kind of been discouraged from trying it again. If anyone knows a super legit way to make a good red rust, be sure to let me know. This last pigment is the most recent one I've attempted from two or three weeks ago. It's been requested a few times and cherry season was in its last days so I thought I'd take the opportunity to try to make paint from them. These cherries here are the very last of the season unfortunately and they are already pretty mushy. I start by removing the seeds and stems. I then start crushing them in a mortar and pestle. It's a very beautiful color. I then strain the juice and place it in the fridge for the night. Unfortunately, I have no more footage after that, so I'll just keep it super short and sweet. The next day, after maybe 12 hours in the fridge, the juice had turned super brown and a layer of mold had developed on the surface. I reflexively threw it out without thinking of taking a picture or anything, so sorry about that. I won't be able to try this again till next season and I would have moved by then so I'm not sure if I'll find this type of cherries where I go but hopefully I'll get a do over though. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, I promise I'm actually working on more pigments. If there's any that you'd like to see me try or retry or have thoughts about where these went wrong, be sure to let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.